Hey, this is Dan doing another Let's Play of a Disney animated storybook from my childhood. I'm sure you could tell by this music that it's it's to tie into a certain new Disney movie. Yep, the Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree animated storybook. This was a game my brother and I played when we were, were kids. It originally came out in 1995, and we're playing this because of the new Christopher Robin movie having just come out. Oh, hello! How nice of you to visit the Hundred Acre Wood! Man, what get a load of Piglet's play? voice. That's obviously not John Feitler or you. Travis Oaks. Just click on that little sign right there. If you only want to hear the story, click up there. Yeah, Piglet wasn't in the original short. Right. But of course, Piglet's become such an integral part of the franchise. I mean, he was definitely in the original books by A.A. A. Mill. So. If you click there. Here we go. Okay, have fun. Let's start the story. Here is Winnie the Pooh in the hundred. They couldn't get John. They couldn't get Laurie Maine to narrate it. friends. <laughs> Hello. But at least they've got Jim Cummings as Winnie the Pooh. And yep, I'm happy that he reprised the role of Pooh for this new Christopher Robin movie. I haven't seen it yet, but I plan to real soon with a fr with a friend or two. Let's see. <laughs> that tickles. <laughs> yeah, these Disney animated storybooks are pretty neat, even if they're basically Disney's answer to the living books. Look. <laughs> I don't know if I want to eat that honey if ants are in it. Even if they were cartoonish ants like those. <laughs> Interestingly, it doesn't do the old storybook device that the that the actual cartoons would do. Mr. Sanders. How he lived under the name Sanders in gold letters. I've always liked how it said ring also under the under the doorbell. It's a Hanna-Barbera door sound. It, sometimes you can fool. There we go. Look at that. Hanna-Barbera door slam. This game does use quite a few Hanna-Barbera and Warner Brothers sound effects. And he was like... It supplies word definitions as well. Like... Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is the friendly bear in the story. <laughs> Hello. Wood. A wood is a shady place full of trees and plants and animals. Look at those butterflies. You'll be seeing... There's quite a few butterflies in this game. Couldn't be better timing either. I saw a monarch butterfly flying out outside our house yesterday on my way to work. It's getting to be that time of year. The place where Winnie the Pooh lives is the place where he eats and sleeps and spends most of his time. <laughs> Happily. When Winnie the Pooh does things that make him smile, he does them happily. <laughs> All. 
when Winnie the Pooh is with every one of his friends, he is with all of them. In most cases, these games are like co-produced with, with Media Station. They did a pretty decent job with the animation. Oh, well, hear, hear the song. The very best thing a song can do is tell a story about Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Let's sing it together. Deep in the hundred acres. Yeah, they're all cover versions that were recorded just for this game. Interesting, they didn't use the cover versions recorded in the late 80s, early 90s that was used on the new read-along adaptations of the featurettes. Aw, Eeyore! And Kanga and There's Rabbit and Piglet. That was Piglet's first animated appearance before he finally formally debuted in Pooh and the Blustery Day two years later. At least they got it as Tubby, like in the original. The late late 80s cover version changed it to Chubby Little Cubby for some reason. These are still good cover versions, even if the instrumentals are synthesized. Singing a song twice is really very nice. Let's click on the musical notes. Nah, we gotta get on with the story, Pooh. Let's see. Yeah, Pooh and Honey choose to anim Disney's animated debut of the franchise. And it was the last animated short or featurette released when Walt Disney was still alive. So it has a pretty good legacy. Pooh like to do his stoutness exercises every morning because exercise made him hungry and being hungry meant that it was time for breakfast. And that's probably why Pooh doesn't get too overweight either. He loses some weight and then gains it back so it stays consistent. Look at that. <laughs> he sounds found, he has found speaking college voice. Tigger! <laughs> Morning, Boo! Yep, and of course it's got Jim Cummings as Tigger. Hello. Of course, he wasn't in the original short. He didn't come until Winnie the Pooh in a blustery day. When they announced that Jim Cummings would be taking over voicing Tigger in the Christopher Robin movie, that got me even more pumped up. Hello, Pooh. Oh, hello. <laughs> Repeat that animation there. <sighs> Unless maybe I can like... Ooh. Oh, there we go! Just like in the cartoon! <laughs> Another butterfly. Gopher! This doesn't seem right! He's got the same voice actor as in the New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh Saturday morning cartoon. Huh? Wrong turn! Too bad Disney doesn't really give Go for any love anymore. He hasn't appeared in any new Pooh material well, since the late 90s, outside of the Kingdom Hearts games. Probably because he wasn't in the original books by A.A. A. Mill. Puku, puku, puku. Oh, come on, you couldn't use the actual puku clock sound effect. I mean, it was in the Nickelodeon magazine commercials, and I've heard it in a few Living Books games. 
things. Poco, poco, poco. But I, but I do like the animation of poo after it goes off like that. <laughs> <laughs> Another butterfly. The honey pot again. A regular cuckoo clock. This could be the room of any small boy, but it just happens to belong to a boy named Christopher Robin. Alright, let's see now. Oh, we can check out the definitions for this. Stoutness. Pooh's stoutness makes him a cuddly bear with a round belly. Yep. Ooh. Oh, and you have to see some of these again, but that's all right. At least they're pretty short. Exercises. Stretching is one of the exercises Winnie the Pooh likes to do. Yep. When I'm about, before I perform as that kangaroo mascot, I usually do some stretches and warm-ups before I put the suit on. Morning. Morning is Get my body physically ready. Who wakes up from his sleep and begins his day. Mm -hmm. Not every word has the Poodle has an animation afterward. Honey, when he's hungry, even for breakfast. <laughs> 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 Every morning, Pooh's empty tummy tells him it's time to eat his breakfast. Yeah, honey is sweet, but I generally prefer, like, small... If I do want to eat, eat just plain honey, I prefer to have it in small doses. Uh, here's the song. When a tummy's very round and big, so my feet can't be found, <laughs> I up down and touch the ground <laughs> most people that means it's time to sing along. most people do a touch your toes but not poo and touch the ground probably because he doesn't have any toes so he just touches the ground instead touch the ground in the mood for food I am stopped. Jim Cummings is a good song good job covering these old songs. I improve my game. Although lately, like during this decade, like in the Chris Robin movie, I find Jim Cummings' is poo to sound even more closer to Sterling Holloway's original poo voice. I am short, fat. In a way, I think I like Jim Cummings' is poo better than Sterling Holloway's. Probably because I heard it a lot more as a kid. One of those things from being a 90s kid. I think of things to chew. With a healthy, <laughs> he forgot to say, like honey. Healthy, healthy and the chorus there is their eater. Singing a song twice. Is All right. Now we'll continue the story. No oh, bother, bother. Only the empty part is left. <laughs> the Warner Brothers B sound effect. The only reason for making a buzzing noise. Is because you're a bee. <laughs> and the only reason for being a buzzing sort of bee is to make honey. And the only reason for making honey is for me to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Pooh chased the buzzing sort of bee. Ah, uh, yes, this a bit. Very large tree. Uh, this is pretty much taken directly out of A.A. E. Mill's book, complete with a similar a illustration. Bees. Buzzing around a beehive. It's rude. What? Stop! Besides oh. Pooh Bear, I mean. <laughs> Go for it again.
You know, the MIDI music it basically is kind of similar to Buddy Baker's music score in the original short. More butterflies. Oh, where I am, butterflies of all kinds usually start to appear in April after hibernating in the pupa stage. A squirrel! I get a, quite a few squirrels outside my new house, and a lot more on my college campus. Yeah, but the butterfly thing, I usually don't start to see the monarchs until August. Since it's August now, I'm, start, I'm starting to see them. Aw, oh, look at that! <laughs> nice little argument there. It's a squirrel again. A cranky bird in a nest. <laughs> oh, and it's got babies, too. I remember at our old house for a while there, there was a robin's nest outside in one of our windows. Oh. We got to see the babies. They were cute. <laughs> Here are some of those Hanna-Barbera sound effects Winnie the Pooh kind of reminds me of the New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh series where they use the Hanna-Barbera sounds on that in many cases. Get now for the definitions like chased. When Pooh chased the bee, he ran very fast after it, wanting to catch it. Hmm. Buzzing. Listen to the bees buzzing. Bzzz. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the bees weren't that amused by the narrator's imitation. Bee. Bees are small animals that fly and buzz and make honey and help the flowers grow. And they can sting when threatened. Well, honeybees die, worker honeybees die after stinging. Large. Large is another way of saying that the tree was really big. The squirrel again. When it comes to stinging insects, Wasps are much worse than bees, especially those awful yellow jackets that can be aggressive. Tree. The tree is a tall, woody plant that birds and bees use for their home. It's unusual though, how usually in the Pooh cartoons though, the bees, in the, this original short, the bees are kind of drawn to look more like bumblebees. Those don't make honey though. Oh, usually the most frequent bee I'd carefully. see outside would be the Pooh bumblebee. He climbed the tree carefully, deciding where he would put each paw to be sure he would not fall. But now the bumblebees are getting threatened. Winnie the Pooh wouldn't be very happy with that news. Discovered. When Pooh found all the bees that he hadn't ever seen before, he discovered them for the very first time. At least here it's kind of realistic how the bee's hive is in the tree there. Many, Instead of that usual stock cartoonish bees bee beehive like in the later stuff. More than one. More than two. More than ten. <laughs> now, now we've got to hear the song. A rumbly in my tumbly is a very nice thing. Filling it full makes me want to sing. <laughs> Won't you sing along too? Hum dum dee dum, hum dum dee dum. I'm so rumbly in my tumbly. <laughs> I like how they included the bump there. Time for something sweet. Well, he originally sings hum dee dee dum dum at that part. Prove you like a bee. But I wouldn't be a bear then. So I guess I wouldn't care then. Bears love honey and I'm a poo bear, so I do care, so I'll climb there. I'm so rumbly in my tumbly, time for something, for something sweet. Lennon's just like in the cartoon, except he doesn't fall. It's really very nice. 
Let's make him actually fall to make it more like the original. Ouch! It all comes, I suppose, from liking honey so very, very much. He brushed the prickles from his nose and began to think. 